Hey, hey, everybody, you're listening to Fireball Podcast with Ashley Mayfield, and this is episode 35. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back. Where today we're going to talk all things blue personality. But before we dive in, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you for making uh, making such a huge impact for me. Thank you for encouraging me. Thank you for everything that you guys are doing for the podcast. I appreciate it. I love seeing all the tags. I love uh, seeing all the videos that are being shared. If you're watching this by way of YouTube, thank you so much for helping me spread the word. Continue to get in and leave me a five-star review and pay that fee of sharing it with at least one person. So as always, make sure you buckle up and brace for impact. Today is going to be such a good episode. If you have listened to episode 27, you know that I am so passionate and I am an expert when it comes to the color personality. It is something that I've learned on my entrepreneurial journey and it has brought me so much value. It has changed my life in ways that I cannot describe. It's changed me being a wife, being a mom, being a business owner, and it has allowed me to make an impact in people's lives just like you are listening to today. So today is going to be dedicated to the people who are the blue personalities. If you are not a blue personality, you still want to make sure you tune in because I promise you are going to be making a difference in someone's life who has this personality and you're going to want to learn a tip or two. But we're going to keep this so fun and energetic because blue people, we love having a good time, okay? We are full of so much energy, so much compassion. Uh, We are super animated people. We've got charisma and we love to have a good time. So if you know anyone who is super wild, who hates coloring inside the lines, who is super rebel, Uh, they're probably a blue personality. And if you're confused on anything about the color personalities, like I said, make sure that you go back to episode 27 where I break down what does it mean to be a red, blue, yellow, and green. And you're gonna be able to not only be more self-aware and identify who you are and why you tick the way you tick, but it's gonna help you understand people so much more. So if you are a mom, if you are a wife, if you are a leader in any capacity, if you're involved in extracurricular activities or even in your your career, this information is definitely going to benefit you. But today, we are going into all things blue, and so I want to break down the color combos because it's so important that you understand that out of those four colors I listed, you are your top two colors. And yes, there is a quiz that you can take that will help you accurately uh, identify what pair you are. So today, we're going to break down if you are a dominant blue, what does it mean to be a blue red? What does it mean to be a blue yellow? What does it mean to be a blue green? Because those three color combos are drastically different. Different. And it's so important that you treat them different because everybody is their own little secret style. So let's dive in. First, we're going to talk about a blue red. Now, I've already talked about what it means to be a red blue, and there are a lot of similarities there, but a blue red is different. Trust me. These are people that lead with their heart. These are people that wear their heart on their sleeves, primarily, dominantly. They're fun. They're excited. They love people and teamwork. If you're around someone that is a blue-red personality and you have them sitting at a desk, my friend, doing like meticulous little detailed tasks, you're going to drive them bananas. You are people that you need to be around people because blues love to talk. I always say blues will talk to everybody in a cockroach, okay? I used to get in trouble all the time in school where... Uh, you know, I, it's very unfortunate, but I would get ISS, I would get Saturday school, and you're not allowed to talk in those rooms. And then I'd start talking to people, and then they put my desk next to the wall, and then I'd start talking to the wall, and then I'd get yelled at, yelled at again. Okay, and so <laughs> blues, we just love talking to people. We love uh, community. We are extremely animated, and. I think one of the things that I love about that is being in an industry like entrepreneurship, having a blue-red personality, it is so profitable because we all know that leadership, management, sales, these are huge ways that you can train change the trajectory of your family's life because they're monetized so heavily, being able to learn how to lead people, learn how to manage people, and learn how to do sales. And if you are in, or if you are a blue personality, but you also have that red, you not only have that fun loving tendency about you where you're really animated and you speak people. So people understand you. I might not say the most eloquent words. I might not have a speech that's beyond a sixth grader, but here's what I know. I know how to draw people in. I know how to build an audience and I know how to make an impact in someone's life. And then that red personality is going to come in with that hustle, with that grit, with that grind, with that vision, and they're going to be able to cross finish lines. So I really do think a blue red personality is super, super professional. 
profound. I think they're super powerful. These are the people that everybody loves them and they know how to get stuff done. Now that's if you're like a high functioning blue red. You could also be a very low functioning blue red. So let's talk about that. I think the biggest thing that there is opportunity for is how self-centered a blue red is. They're only thinking of themselves. And I know that sounds really crazy because I just told you how much blues speak people. But the problem is, is a low functioning blue is very emotional and they speak people in a way that makes them feel good. Okay, so low functioning blues have often thought of themselves as yellows because they're like, well, I love to help people out. And it's like, no, honey, you love to help people out because it makes you feel good. You like to host people at your house because it makes you feel and look good. Like you're in control or you're in charge or look at me, look what I did, right? It's not just out of this selfless, let me Uh, modestly and humbly do something for other people. And so when they put themselves first, I don't wanna say that these people are narcissistic because I don't necessarily know if that's true, but what I can say is they're only thinking of themselves and they function everything through the lens of themselves. So these are also people, blue reds, that typically struggle clapping for others because the attention is not on them. And so I've encountered a few people where, you know, if you have person number one that, um, like it takes a lot of courage for them to be able to shout themselves out or it takes a lot of courage for them to be able to brag on themselves in a way. Person number two, who is a blue red, has to come in and say, oh, but I've done that too. Oh, but I did a little bit more or oh, but don't don't exclude me. I'm right there with you. You know, and oftentimes, I don't wanna say it's this backhanded compliment, but sometimes it's a compliment like, oh, I'm so proud of you, congratulations. Now let me tell you about all the things I did. And so they almost unintentionally, and again, I don't, a low functioning, it could be intentional, it could be unintentional, but they almost try to steal the spotlight back from people because of how much they love attention. They These are people that do not like being left out. These are people that um, are so in tune with what they're feeling emotionally emotionally, that they can use their feelings and they can guilt trip people and they can manipulate people into getting what they want. And then that red comes in and they're so focused on what they want that they can use their emotions to get what they want opposed to using their words. So I would say that if you are someone that is like this, these could be, did I just speak English? I think I just stuttered. These can be some, we're going to, we're going to fireball that. (laughs) we're going to destroy that part. Um, So uh, these could be people that need to learn to position themselves where maybe they only recognize and uh, say good things about people for 30 days. Maybe they need to do a 30-day challenge where every day they find one person in their world and they send a voice memo and they don't share anything they've done. They don't share how amazing they are. They don't share any accomplishments they've done or anything they've thought through. They're only recognizing the other person. And that could be really difficult. Um, like I've shared before in episode learning how to clap for her. I don't remember what number it is, but it took me a really long time to learn how to clap for other people as a red blue. I do love attention. I do love making sure that I'm included because that's a huge part of being a blue. And I will say, I do find, even though I do have a lot of people in my life that tell me that I'm a high functioning blue, I do have traits of my blue that are very low functioning. I hate being excluded. I hate being left out. And if I'm not monitoring that, it can make me go to a very emotionally immature place. And so these are people that if you are a blue red and you find yourself struggling with some of these things, you might have to do some kind of 30 day challenge or 10 day challenge. I'm not sure you can get very creative because you are very creative people. Um, But how can you start changing this where you don't always have to talk about yourself. You don't always have to pull the conversation back on yourself. You don't always have to share um, everything that you're winning in or to make yourself look good to fit in. Sometimes just fitting in is being a good listener and allowing other people to speak. Let's talk about what it means to be a blue yellow. And I'm so excited. The next episode coming up will be all about yellow personalities. I know so many of you out there, uh, you cannot wait for me to start talking about yellow personalities, but blue yellows are some pretty special people. They are full of not only, um, they're very passionate, but they're compassionate. And so blues are very passionate people. We we are lovers. Uh, we go deep with things, okay? We're, our emotions run very, very deep and we're very passionate about what we believe in. And yellows aren't 
necessarily emotional creatures, but they're very compassionate. They're moved by um, an overall mission or they're moved um, uh, by a crusade or, or by a movement, you know? And so blue reds, very passionate and compassionate creatures together, and they're very others focused. Blues are very focused on making sure that they feel good and that others feel good. It's all about feelings. And yellows are very uh, focused on making sure that they're serving people, making sure that they're setting people up for success or they're taking care of others, or they're just prioritizing other people above their own needs. And that's very honoring. That's very humbling. I think that uh, blue yellows know how to get things done because they're people that uh, get really excited and then they want to serve people. And that just fills their cup up. It feels really good knowing that you get to make a difference. And so you're not only fulfilled because you took action, because yellows are very hard workers, that you took action to help better someone's life or better someone's organization or uh, whether you're volunteering or you're working at your job or it's just in your family or around your neighborhood, you feel better because you took action and then your uh, that's your yellow and then your blue just feels good because you feel good. You were able to do something for, you put a smile on someone's face. You made someone laugh. Like it makes you feel good when other people feel good. And so being others focused um, is a great thing. I can tell you that uh, even blues, it, again, it depends if you're a high functioning or low functioning. Um, you can either really focus on yourself or really focus on other people. And uh, blue yellows are always serving people. They're always busy, always on the go, always have their calendar filled doing things for other people. People. Now, the reason being is because we got to talk about the opportunities is that a blue yellow can typically tend to struggle um, with themselves. The blue in them is not going to stay disciplined enough to be able to do the hard work it's going to take to advance them to the next level in their life. And then the yellow almost feels guilty focusing on themselves because they're going to constantly self-sabotage and position other people as a priority over themselves. So, you know, I need to take care of myself, but I, and I don't think it's that they're ignorant of what their needs are. I just don't think they know how to put themselves first because the because of the story they're going to tell themselves, right? I know I need to take care of myself, but this person is hurting worse than me. I know that it's important that I'm, you know, cooking healthy meals for myself, but my kids really need me right now. And they're just constantly going to prioritize all these other things above themselves. And it's almost this like, weird sadistic thing because it's so modest and humbling to prioritize yourself. But some people use that as a form of self-sabotage where, oh, I'll get to me later. I'll get to me later. And they're intentionally saying that knowing gosh darn well, they're not going to get to themselves later. So I don't know if that's where you're at, but you have got to start realizing that you can't pour from an empty cup and you get to prioritize yourself and it's not bad at all. Um, they, It's almost like a blue-yellow lacks the discipline and the self-awareness to accomplish what it is that they need. And a lot of that can be because blues and yellows struggle saying no to people. And so if you're a blue-yellow combo, it's like the worst of both worlds because blues, we don't like saying no to people. And I say this, this is, you know, me too and something I've had to really grow strong in over the last 12 months, but I don't like saying no to people because I know I'm letting them down. It's gonna make them feel bad. Um, I also don't like being left out. And so even if it's something that, and I went over this in episode 27 when I talked about being a blue, but even if it's something that I know I don't wanna participate in or something that I don't enjoy, instead of just saying, no, I want nothing to do with that, I feel, there's my blue, I feel like I'm going to be left out. And so then I say yes to things that I don't want to do or that don't bring me joy or that don't fill my cup up just because I don't want to feel left out. And then I get overwhelmed and then I don't prioritize myself. And then I lack the discipline to really cross my finish line. And so you have to be careful of that. And then if you're a yellow on top of that, you don't like saying no to people because you just, you feel like you're going to let them down. If they had so much strength to come to you to ask for help, you almost feel the responsibility, like it's your duty and your obligation to be able to fulfill whatever it is they're asking for you. And you're going to feel bad by saying no to them because now you're like, they really needed me and I'm disappointing them. They really needed me and I'm letting them down. And I wanna challenge you to end 2020 and going into 2021 learning to say no. You cannot be everything for everybody. You are not called to be everybody's teacher. You're not called to be everybody's nurse, everybody's caregiver, everybody's host. You cannot have your hands in all the pots because then you're the jack of all trades, master of none. And 
You're never gonna go anywhere and you're never gonna change your life by being that. So last but not least, let's talk about the blue-green combo. Now, this is a very uh, difficult personality. This is a little bit more complex, but they do have some incredible attributes that make them extremely unique. I think the first thing is that a blue-green is extremely creative and critical thinker. So I wouldn't really say that um, blues are thinkers in a way where they're logical or they process. That's not how we think, but as blues, we're extremely extremely creative and we're very innovative. We know how to take something and make it, uh, take something from nothing and make it into something. And we also know how to take something that's already established and make it that much better. And that's the creativity side. And then the green side is extremely critical where they know how to break things down and build them back up or um, they're very resourceful so they can find multiple different avenues in order to cross the finish line. And they're always trying to figure something out or better something. And sometimes it can come again, depends on if you're a high functioning blue green or a low functioning blue green. It can come from like a negative perspective, like you're playing devil's advocate, or it can come from a very positive perspective where you're just breathing fresh life into something, okay? I also think that uh, blue greens are extremely observant. So as a blue, I always like to say that I'm a people watcher. I'm one of those people that could sit down in the mall and just watch people all day long and Really, it's because I'm judging them in my head. I don't say that very boastfully or proudfully, but that's just, you know, the way that my brain works. And so we're very observant and we watch we watch things, whether it's people and that's the blue or the green, it's the details of tasks, but we're paying attention, extremely observant to all the little things, very, very detail oriented for both of these. Now, uh, a high functioning blue and green, they love the details. I would say a low functioning blue and green can get really tripped up in the details where me as a blue, it's low functioning. The details really paralyze me. I get really drained thinking of all the little things. Um, in fact, that's one thing that like me and Jason, and the details really excite him. He's a very high functioning green and it, when it comes to being detail oriented and I'm a very low functioning blue where what gets him very excited, it actually drains me and paralyzes me because I don't like change. And so for instance, when he wanted to create this huge ensemble that I have for a desk, I have multiple cameras, I've got all my podcast stuff. There's there's all these like gadgets and microphones and it's a, a, a rising desk or a standing desk where it can fluctuate and go up and down. And at first I was so paralyzed by everything. I was like, no, no, no. And I just kept saying no. And it finally got to the point where I've just had to tell him, like, if you want to do something and it requires change, I don't handle change very well. I just need you to do it. Like, I just need you to do it because anytime he just pulls the trigger, I always love it once it's done. But the thought of it changing, those details really trip me up and I get really emotional over it. And so again, depending on where you're at, whether you're high functioning or low functioning, a lot of the things that I think trips up a, a blue-green, and I think that color combo is one of the most difficult color combos. I um, And I say this very humbly as someone who, you know, in my uh, one of my latest episodes, I've walked you guys through some of my mental health journey and some things that I've had to do to make sure that I have my ducks in a row and that I'm taking care of myself. I do believe that the internal struggle that happens on a blue-green is probably one of the most difficult. I do believe that these are people that need professional help. I do do stand um, just in the truth that these are people who think and feel so deep that if they're not careful and they are a low functioning uh, blue green combo, that it could be very dangerous for them. And so these are people that I would encourage you, if this is not you or someone you know, to make sure that they're doing personal development, make sure that they're breathing life into themselves, make sure that they're seeing a counselor or investing in a life coach. It is worth every single penny to make sure you have someone there as a safeguard. And I'm sure there's so many free resources that you can take, um, that you can take advantage of as well. You just have to be resourceful. But a lot of the, a lot of the discontentment inside of a blue green is the judgment. And this is where it's an internal and an external struggle. And so a blue is gonna have that external judgment, right? Remember I said I could sit down all day in the mall and watch people. Um, and that's because we're judging people. We're so quick to say, oh my God, why'd she brush her hair like that? Ew, look what she's wearing. Oh my God, did you see her nasty attitude? Like we are just so quick to judge others. And because we're so quick to judge others, we are constantly 
expecting people to judge us. And so now we almost play it safe, even though we want to be exuberant and we want to be bold. Um, we're worried that people are gonna laugh at us. We're worried about that public humiliation. And so I find that a lot of times blues hold themselves back and they'll play small because they don't want other people making fun of them or discrediting them or embarrassing them. And so that's a huge part as a blue of the judgment that we are facing. It's this external environment, other people, um, almost like you're back in high school and you, you're questioning what lunch table to sit at. That feeling is kind of like you don't wanna make the wrong move and you don't want anyone to laugh at you. You don't wanna get in trouble. You don't wanna call the wrong shot. But on a green, it's a lot different. It's it's not really this external thing. It's more because greens don't really um, prioritize people's opinions about them. They just are who they are. And But they're so internal that I find that a green is having that same type of judgment, but except it being external, it's internal. They are so hard on themselves because they struggle with that perfectionism. They uh, believe that holding themselves to a high standard is what's going to bring permission and approval externally. And so they have these really high expectations on themselves and they've got to cross all these finish lines and cross all the T's and dot all the I's and they have to do everything perfect. And it's almost this self-sabotaging level because none of us are perfect. You know, and when they, we can chase after perfection, we can, um, you know, uh, per, what did I say? I actually said it a few years ago today on Facebook. I saw it in my memory is perfect practice prevents piss poor performance, right? We can chase after the pursuit of perfection. We can want to operate with excellence in our life. And I personally live in that camp. I don't think there's anything wrong with holding the bar high and operating with a level of excellence, but if you are someone who holds yourself to such, such a standard and every time you don't mean it, you almost have this self-sabotaging, like I'm not good enough, I'm so stupid, I can't, like this internal dialogue where you feel less than because you did not meet or exceed your own personal standards, your own personal qualifications. I think at some point that judgment, it's going to suffocate you. And so not only does a blue struggle with this judgment, but now a green struggles with this judgment. And so when you bring them together, now you can understand why I said that these are people who I am strong advocates of mental health. I am strong advocates that these people have a regular counselor in their life because when you combine these two things, now it's just judgment and condemnation from both perspectives. It's not only am... Uh, people going to judge me if I step outside of my box, but it's if I step outside of my box, am I even going to do it the best of my ability? Because no action is better than bad action. And these are the people that get really paralyzed and they're afraid to take a step. And so if you're there, again, I'm just a strong encourager of mental health. I think being able to grow yourself and really being able to give yourself the grace. It may be not the, you don't, you might not need the mental toughness, personal development. You might not need the people that are like, shut up. Up, be a big girl, put your big girl panties on, get over yourself and make it happen. You might not need that. You might need a little bit more love, like self-love, self-care, um, and just grace and receive that grace. And that's one of the things I love about Jesus. Like no matter where you're at, he's just, it, it's grace, like fresh every morning, every day. And you can lean in that and stand on that, that you do not have to be perfect. And it's okay if people don't approve of you as long as you're approving of yourself. And so give yourself the grace to be a starter. Give yourself the grace to give yourself permission to fail. Give yourself permission to trial and error. Give yourself permission to figure it out and don't beat up on yourself. Don't have so much self-judgment um, and don't be afraid of the judgment of others because it can really paralyze you. So that's a little bit all about the blue personalities. Again, I think blue personalities are incredible when it comes to other humans. You guys bring the laughter to the group. Group. You guys bring the positive energy. You guys bring just that charisma that so many people need. And you have such a strength. You speak people in a way that no other color can speak people. And so use that wisely, use it to your benefit and use it to making an impact because that's exactly what you guys do. You make an impact.